December 6, 2013. This image is Paul's guys just before a solar flare comes across high sun. It's what I've been waiting for. We, we may get a few of these before the uh, debris trail comes over Earth. But it's dark, and I've said that, guys, and there's a couple of reports out there that ice sun's on fire and things like that. It, it, it is not that, guys. You see how dark it is in the area? And this is as the flare's blowing under Mercury and Earth, and then it's going to, it's uh, the flare changes and expands out. Now you can see where ice sun is. You see that V right there. That's the meteor storm. What we have is a solar spotlight, basically. we got a flare there, and you see that light pointing straight up at Ison. These flares have followed Ison all the way into the sun and all the way out. Now, we had a CME that left yesterday, and we're going to get effects from it in a couple of days, guys, that large one from the filament across the top. But notice here, again, these are the images before and that's why I'm saying we're not going to be able to see this, guys. It's right there in the top through these. It's right there. I haven't moved anything in it other than step through four frames from this A camera, a stereo. So it's not going to be visible. But like a thief in the night, guys, you're not going to be able to see it. You know, again, if you have, if they start tracking or they start showing us their radar tracking, that would be helpful, but, but I doubt it. I just they have dismissed it, and what that does is they they haven't dismissed it in their minds, guys at NASA. They want us to dismiss it in ours. A lot going on, and you see all these satellites being launched, things like that, guys. And the nation's broke. Really, we're borrowing money from China. We just had the sequester. They're about to. They're cutting people down to four or five dollars a month. Some of them on their food stamps, things like that. But they can continue to put satellites up to sniff Mars. Really? Do you? Oh, you really think we believe that NASA? Please. Now this is in a reversed image. I sun is moving away at the camera. Now yesterday I said two million, but it's just under three million miles per day. That's why it appears to be just fading away, guys. It's not. You got Mercury coming in fast. From left to right, and Earth is the larger ball there. And coming in on the left there, that's the Pleiades star system, guys. It's been there as we watched Ice Sun come in for a month now. But look at there. There's plenty of power and energy in that. And to even be able to see that tells you the size of it. Again, show you a close-up. Here's the flare. And Ice Sun was totally in the dark to this point other than infrared and radar. Now, this is when you see the V in the top left, guys. That's the moment the flare lit it. That's The ice sun is not on fire. We caught a perfect op opportunity to see it in this bright flare, much brighter than the flare from the video this morning. If you remember, I was barely able to get light. Look at the size of these objects. Now, they're somewhat, I mean, they're glaring here because the flare is so bright, but they're there, and that's just the ones you can kind of make out the outline on in the V. It's a huge meteor storm, guys. These things are big, big. Each one of those pieces are bigger than anything they, we were ever told about the complete size of ice sun. Now, on the flare tracker, guys, you see ice sun in the pink square and the flare following out. You see that? Now, that, this is today's date. That flare hasn't hit ice sun again, so if any of you guys are watching tonight and tomorrow, you may see it. But notice how fast ice sun is moving, how fast it is approaching Earth. Earth is the yellow dot just to the right. Now, it appears to be missing it. It's not. The, what this model does not show is the rotation of the solar system. It's simply showing ice sun's movement and the flare. But notice there's a new object here, Maven. See that? You remember they launched it about two weeks ago, and they're showing it on this model. It's part by Earth now. There's a, there's a lot of things in here that's so BS that it, it's childish. But it, this is called Maven, and that name in Hebrew actually means, I think, gatherer, gatherer of knowledge. And that's what this thing is going to be gathering information. Right now, that it's not very far from Earth, as you notice. They're watching ice on with this thing. That's what it's about. Then if it survives that, if something doesn't happen, it's going to be out by September 2nd, 
2014 at Mars. But guys, this thing, $672 million total. That's including the launch of $187 million just for the launch. And guys, we're being sequestered, borrowing money from China. It's crazy, crazy. Nobody believes this. To sniff the atmosphere of Mars, and we've had instruments on Mars and different things there for a long time. Here's what they're watching. That, this is why they're going to watch iSun as it comes through. And by September 22nd, this is going to be parked beside Mars. Here's the reason, and you've heard about it. It's 2013 signing spring. And notice today's date, December 6, 2013. This is a long or orbit. It's not a short uh, orbit for this comet. We'll play through. Now you notice, that, as I tilt this up, it's coming from below us. Check that out. Going up through June. And they're going to have it. September 22nd just went by. At that point, October 20th, many scientists have said there's a good chance it's going to hit Mars. They want that satellite there, and we've got a couple of rovers on it, to see if something strikes Mars, will it, will it, what kind of damage will it do, and will it divert that comet and debris? They're, they're watching a lot of things now, but um, we're only being told none of the truth. How about that? But anyway, that's what we're looking at, guys, and I, I think ISUN's going to be over us around the 26th instead of the 28th because it's still maintaining just under 3 million miles per day. Heads up, be safe.